Today's video request comes from Quill Gaming 4000 on Instagram. Do you want to help shape my content? I want to make stuff you guys want to watch. So join me on Instagram at Archon1981, where you can give me that feedback. Or tell me how I'm not really a gamer or whatever. Quill writes, show us some highlights of your 3DO collection. Okay. Archon1981. So behind me is a complete in box 3DO North American set. Or actually there's a couple of holes. I really should have filmed this segment before I pulled the games I was going to talk about today. I built this collection over about two years of 3DO being my primary set. And to kind of explain that, whenever I'm collecting for a set, I usually have one set that is my primary set that I am dedicated towards building, and then usually an offset or a secondary set. So while 3DO was my primary set, I think Sega Saturn was my secondary? With about 170 games in the set, give or take VCDs, porn games, demos, mailaways. It's by no means the largest set that I've built, but was by far the most difficult. Several factors make 3DO difficult to collect for, particularly complete in box. All of the boxes were huge, sometimes really huge, even by North American long box standards at the time. Almost every game also came in a jewel case, so the motivation for people to keep their boxes was pretty low, especially for the large number of kids' edutainment titles on the platform. Small children love to rip through packaging. There also just isn't a huge number of 3DO collectors yet, compared to the thoroughly researched and collected NES or SNES libraries. Some people can see 3DO as kind of a wasteland, which means that a lot of games aren't selling regularly enough to solidify a market. So the same game you pay $50 for one day, you could pay $250 for the next. And some of these games just never come up for sale. The very, very rare in the set, like Dino Park Tycoon, sells maybe once a year, if that. While it's true that there are many cross-platform ports and games that aren't particularly spectacular on the 3DO, there are some standouts from both a collectability and gameplay viewpoint that I'd like to point out today. Let's get into the games. So let's just get these out of the way first. Being a console that was birthed during the sort of heyday of the full motion video game era. 3DO has its fair share of porn games? As you might imagine, these weren't really available at your local Walmart. Uh, most of them were mail away opportunities. You could find ads for them in adult magazines or order forms for more porn games in the porn games. So, since you had to mail away for these, if you decide that they're going to be part of your North American set, which most of the 3DO collectors do, then they aren't going to be terribly common. As you've probably guessed already, a number of these games are pretty light on the gameplay. I mean, what do you expect from a game that's literally called Sex? Most of these are more or less an excuse to show really low-res adult footage. I do want to take the opportunity to point out that most of these games actually don't come in long boxes like the majority of the 3DO collection does. Complete in box for most of these games consists of jewel case, manual, disc, and a cardboard slip cover. Uh, there are a few exceptions though. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, which is arguably the most notable adult game for the 3DO, thanks to the angry video game nerd covering it, comes in a standard long box release, as does Neurodancer. On the other hand, Mind Teaser, which is a jigsaw puzzle game, comes in an extra large long box and has this plastic tray insert and a sleeve for the jewel case. So for a CIB copy of Mind Teaser, you're looking at all this. As you might imagine, this will likely be the most difficult adult game for you to find for the collection. Now, let's talk about edutainment titles. For the uninitiated, edutainment titles are exactly what they sound like, a cross between education and entertainment. Edutainment titles on the 3DO run both ends of that spectrum. Shelley Duvall's It's a Bird's Life, which listeners of the Collector's Quest podcast will be very familiar with, is a point-and-click activity title, so it's a little bit more game than it is education, while lowering your score with Tom Kite is literally teaching you how to golf. Because many of these games sold so poorly, and they were marketed directly towards children, they're often going to be some of the most difficult titles for you to find complete. There are a couple special things here to note. Bird's Life, Mathematics, and Slope Style are going to be a little bit smaller and narrower than your typical 3DO box. Bird's Life actually has no jewel case. You just open up the front flap of the box, and there's your disc. This is terrible. Mathematics and Slope Style do have jewel cases, but they're made of cardboard. 
and have this locking flap. If you're just collecting jewel case, then Carrier Fortress at Sea and Space Shuttle are extremely common. But complete in box, they are banana pants rare. In fact, Carrier Fortress at Sea was the last game I needed to complete my set. Lastly, let's talk about the big two. Lucene's Quest and Dino Park Tycoon. Lucene's Quest is kind of the little Samson of the 3DO. It's not necessarily the most rare, but it's the title with the most hype around it being rare. Don't get me wrong, finding a complete copy, especially in good condition, is a chore. And it's actually a really good game. The 3DO has very few RPGs on the platform, and this is the only traditional JRPG. There's genuine demand for this game on the platform as well, because unlike a lot of other titles on the 3DO, the English version of Lucene's Quest is a console exclusive for the 3DO. Although you can find it in Japanese on the Saturn under Sword and Sorcery. The sole JRPG on the 3DO will cost you. As of this video, you're looking at about $400 US for a nice complete copy. And then there's this. Dino Park Tycoon. Dino Park Tycoon is an isometric city builder by MECC, which you may recognize the name because they also did the Oregon Trail. One of the most frustrating parts about collecting this game, from both a morale and a value standpoint, is that while it's incredibly rare on the 3DO, it is super, super common and inexpensive on the PC and the Mac. If there is a stadium event for the 3DO, it's definitely Dino Park Tycoon. The comparative value of this game versus the rest of the library is pretty staggering. Currently, this game represents just a hair under a third of the value for the entire complete inbox library. In other words, if you wanted to buy every game, not buying this one would save you a third of the total cost. As such, this is the game that tends to stop set collectors in their tracks on 3DO. And not just because of value, but for rarity too. Typically, we see this game sell once a year, sometimes, but usually less often than that. Even a disc-only copy can be very challenging and expensive. So there's a whole pile of 3DO games that I really wanted to cover in this video, but we're already running a little bit long. So I promise to come back and tackle some more notable 3DO titles in the future. Hopefully this just kind of gives you a brief overview of things that are particularly difficult to come by or interesting. Thank you again for Cool Gaming 4000 on Instagram for the suggestion, and thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Also, for more game collecting content, you should listen to the podcast that I co-host, The Collector's Quest, which you can find pretty much anywhere that you can find podcasts. I'll leave a SoundCloud link in the description. Thanks again, everybody. Keep collecting, and I'll see you soon.